and welcome to the second episode of Dust514101. In this episode you will learn about the match types, the war points system, and the end of game rewards. There are two types of match in Dust514 right now, Ambush and Skirmish. Ambush is basically team deathmatch. The first team to deplete the enemy clone reserves, as shown in the top left corner, or has the most clones left at the end of the match, if the time runs out, wins. In Skirmish, two teams vie for control over a district by hacking points, known as Null Cannons. When hacked, the Null Cannons will do constant damage against the enemy MCC, the large ships flying overhead. The winning team is decided by either depleting the enemy clone reserves, or destroying the MCC. The two bars on either side of the minimap shows the shield and armour of both your and your enemy's MCC. At the end of a match, you'll be given a battle report. This report will show you how much skill points you've earned, how much ISK you've earned, and whatever salvage you have gained throughout the match. As a general rule, the more war points you accue in battle means more SP. ISK is decided by however much you destroy inside that battle, as well as also the total amount destroyed by your team. You can also, see, at the end of the match, see the end result and see the total, the total scores of both you and your enemy team. Sometimes you'll receive salvage from a match. In rare cases, you can get rare items such as officer weapons, which are much greater in value and in power than any known prototype weapon. There are many ways of gaining war points inside a battle. The most common way is to kill your enemies. For every enemy you kill, you get 50 points. If you help in the killing of an enemy, you can also get assist points, which is 25 points. Placing a drop-up link will allow your allies to spawn on that location. You also get 25 points for every time they spawn. When you successfully hack a position, the enemies can no longer spawn in that location. But be careful, when you are hacking, you can no longer really see what's going on around you, which can make yourself an easy kill for your enemies. If you jump from a high place, you can activate the inertial dampener by simply pressing X. This stops you from taking damage from falling from high places. To call in a vehicle, you press right on the direction pad, press vehicles, then the type of vehicle you want to call in, then your particular fitting. Do remember that you can only call in a vehicle that you've already created a fitting for. In a few moments, your vehicle will be delivered to you by RDV. Simply walk up to it, press X to start driving. By holding R2 to bring out the equipment wheel, then pressing R3, you can access the order wheel. Orders allow you to get more points to your teammates by giving a small bonus. Doing this also gives you a bonus, gives a, give you bonus points for every action that they make that gives them points. So once you have an order selected, simply press the fire button to give an order on a person, or even an objective. You can also access orders by pressing down on the map on the D-pad to access the map, and then using the other buttons to access to give an order from there. Note that only the squad leader can access orders. At the beginning of a skirmish battle, all of the positions and the installations are neutral. 
meaning that hacking them will instantly capture them. Under normal conditions, hacking a position will usually take about 20 seconds to capture on the other side. This is a supply depot, as not only are they very valuable, but by being around them, they resupply your ammo, grenades, and remote explosives. They also allow you to change your fittings on the fly to something more appropriate to your situation. This is a CRU, or Clone Reserve Unit. By hacking one, it allows your team to spawn on that location, and stops your opponents from spawning on that location. This can provide important strategic, uh, strategic importance in case you or your team die, as it allows you to get right back into the heat of the battle. Every now and again, you and your teammates will die. In Skirmish, every time you die, the clone count is depleted by one. However, this is not until you release from your clone. If you or your teammate has a nanite injector, you can redeploy them back into the battle without losing a clone from your count. This, mixed with the repair tool, is an excellent way to, to provide support to your team and to, and to ensure that they survive longer. You also get points for repairing your allies. To change weapon or select a different piece of equipment, simply press R2 and then use the right stick to select the weapon or equipment that you want to use. If you are healing or have the repair tool active on a friendly target when they kill someone, you'll get 35 points as guardian points. Do you remember that in order to use the repair tool on the target, you must have active line of sight? The Nano Hive is probably the most used piece of equipment that you'll use in Dust 514. It replenishes ammo and grenades. Any of your teammates using the Nano Hive will also give you points. When your squad has reached 2,500 war points, the squad leader can call in an orbital bombardment. This is indicated by the top right hand corner of the window, indicating that you can now use one. To call in an orbital bombardment, press right on the D-pad to bring up the deployment window, select orbital strike, position strike, then select the area on which you would wish to call down. Press X to confirm the location. What you're seeing in this video is as known as a precision strike. They are not called in by players. Player orbital strikes can only be done in court matches, but we will look at that in another video.